Good morning everybody and uh, welcome to uh, getting started with glue for beginners by spark tutorial number seven so if you're directly watching this tutorial uh, you might not get the context so let me give you a little bit context if anybody's watching directly at part seven this is a series that i started for beginners this video the first video was basically what is glue we saw a very nice video that describes about glue uh, you know, why is it so popular? Why people are adopting uh, glue as their, you know, desired ETL, you know, um, stuff. Then the second video, we essentially brushed up your memory on PySpark. So we did group by filter, head, tail, applying custom UDF function. Third, third video was basically we made a glue crawler. Fourth video, we wrote the infrastructure code. Fifth video, basically we wrote a simple ETL script, PySpark script. The sixth video, we converted that script into an infrastructure. And the seventh video, this is when we are going to show you how to schedule a glue script and also write the infrastructure code for that, right? This is part number seven. So let's get started straight into action. All right, let me share my screen. Give me one sec. <clears throat> All right. So again, uh, please watch the other parts. Uh, they all are on the get, uh, get up section, very well, very well organized, right? And all the resources are given, right? Uh, each video has its own folder. So if you come to GitHub, each video has folder and its appropriate resources, okay? So basically, uh, again, I'm gonna refresh your memory quickly. We have done this in the last video and then I'll uh, show you, okay? So in the last video, basically, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about glue, right? So basically we are reading from a data catalog here, right? So basically uh, we have some dummy data on S3, right? We essentially, uh, catalog that right we essentially made a crawler and then uh, we are reading the data from a catalog here as you can see on line 31 after that I'm converting the data frame into a spot data frame I'm essentially creating a new column called dedo hash and again if you don't know what this is so for example anytime uh, let's say uh, let's assume you have two columns called first name and last name okay so anytime, you know, the value is going to be same, right? Uh, so what, what's going to happen is their hash is going to be the same, right? So basically anytime a new, um, you know, anytime a row is same, uh, the hash will be same, which means I have a duplicate and I can drop that, right? So we wrote a simple function over here, a UDF function that returns the MD5 hash, right? And essentially, if you observe on line 38, I'm creating a, a column called dedo hash and I'm passing it first and last name. Uh, once that is done, I'm dropping all the duplicate values on dedo hash, right? Once that is done, we convert the spark data frame into a glue dynamic frame, and then we write into S3. That's great, right? Uh, again, refreshing your memory. This is all we did in the last video. Um, so the new part that is going to be added is the scheduling part. We essentially wrote our glue database over here. We essentially wrote our crawler over here. Again, all this was explained pretty well in the previous parts. And while all I'm doing is just refreshing your memory. Uh, we used a plugin called serverless glue and here we essentially defined our glue job. The job will have a name, a script path. Uh, we are using glue 3.0. We're using a sp uh, type as spark, uh, maximum three workers. We are enabling job bookmarks. And um, uh, if you observe uh, maximum retry is one, timeout is 2880. And we're using a standard worker that is G1X. Uh, all of that is great. Now this is the part that has been added on the infrastructure code. So now uh, triggers, right? Trigger essentially allows you to schedule your glue jobs on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a monthly, weekly, or on a custom cron, uh, cron schedule. So here I'm saying that uh, I'm, I'm giving it a name called glue script trigger. I'm giving it a description. I'm giving essentially start on create uh, to true, right? And schedule, this is the cron expression, which means this glue script will run every single day at 12 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock. And the action here, I'm specifying the job name. So observe over here, that's the job name. So I'm specifying to the trigger the job name. Now, once this is done, I already deployed this uh, stack. I said SLS deploy. So again, this will deploy my entire um, stack on AWS, right? So that's done. So let's wait. Okay, great. So that's good. If I head over to my AWS, go to the database, here you can see there's a database called LearnDB, right? Then of course we have a crawler. We did run the crawler, right? I have one table created, right? Now going to the job section, right? This job, the the script was deployed through ACI, um, through 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 uh, serverless framework, right? This is the code, right? Now if I wanted to show you quickly, if you go 
on the bottom section, there's something called triggers. And this is being created by the serverless framework, right? So if you observe carefully, here is the name that we gave. For example, I'll show you the environment variable here as well. Uh, glue script trigger, that's the name that is uh, over here, right? Uh, trigger type is schedule, which means this is gonna be activated on a schedule or an expression. Every day at 12 o'clock, it's gonna run the job, right? So if you see here, if I click on edit, right? That's the glue uh, name of the trigger, right? It's a schedule, right? Uh, frequencies custom and then we give a cron uh, expression so now what happens is uh, my glue script will basically run on a daily uh, schedule at 12 o'clock right um, then you can undo the stack by once you're done practicing right always destroy it so I'm gonna say SLS remove this will essentially remove everything uh, from um, including glue database crawlers tables and my glue job and the trigger so that's that now, what are we gonna expect in the next week, next videos, right? This is pretty much the basic. At this point, you are very comfortable writing glue job. You are very comfortable writing infrastructure code, crawler, database, everything, right? That's great. Now let's dive into certain niche topic. For example, uh, for example, I do wanna show you a small thing what we're gonna do in the next video. I'll cover briefly in the next video for sure. So for example, quickly sharing my screen. Again, uh, this is gonna be the next part. So say you have a assume I know, you know i just say so assume that you have a field called name uh, first name you have an id and you know you do the string string right so basically if you observe uh, when i catalog my data this is my version zero right this is the columns that i have and this is appropriate data type right now if you observe when you run the glue crawler next let's say uh, in a week you again run the glue crawler and uh, I guess the schema did change, right? So what I'm trying to show you here, observe carefully. So I'll merge this one together quickly. So if you observe, um, say tomorrow the schema changes, right? So this changes to big end, right? So, but your glue ETL script is essentially using this code, right? So it will break, right? So what we wanna do is basically, we wanna identify that there's a change in schema, right? And once we do identify, we wanna send an email. And this is a pretty common use uh, use case uh, wherever. I mean, people who are uh, you know data engineers, they know if you're if you're into warehouse, right? Uh, you're gonna load data every day incrementally into landing tables, and anytime a mapping change at the source, uh, the job has to fail, right? And you have to alert the user saying that hey, uh, in the data in this database, this table, uh, this column has changed from this to this. So now someone goes and fix that manually, right? So they have to fix it. So that's something that we're gonna do next video. After that, we're gonna see when a job fails, how do we essentially get alerts, right? So we're gonna write all the infrastructure code, Lambda for that. And once we have all of these, then we're gonna combine everything in, in, in into one project. For example, um, the crawlers, uh, the database, clue scripts, triggers, um, uh, alerting, schema changes alert, right? So all these stuff we're gonna do. Once we're done with all these parts, then we will dive into other sources such as DynamoDB, uh, maybe loading into Aurora, um, you know, uh, and some some more stuff in Glue, right? So I hope you are enjoying this series. That is, this is basically video number seven, I believe. Let me make sure it's seven, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is video number seven. And if you have any more question, list your question in the comments. And uh, as I said, all the source code is on the GitHub section with proper resources. So make sure to check that out and make sure to try them out as well. That's how you're gonna learn. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.